So what's up guys? Now imagine you got to solve this. They give you this diagram and you start reading. You got a reactor, you got a scrubber, you got a decanter, and you got a distillation column. You got all the required data to solve it, okay? Now imagine you gotta change. So you got the units, right? You gotta change all the temperature of reactors. Let's say they tell you what will happen if we run this in a 35 Celsius environment. Let's say it's summer, this one it was, well, let's say winter, but let's say this is spring and then it comes summer and the average temperature of the reactor becomes 35 Celsius. What will happen? Well, it will be kind of problematic to model this because you gotta overrun all these once again. Now, let's say the feed, let's, let's ignore the, ch the change in temperature. Let's say the feed changes because our provider uh, has changed our process. So let's say that instead of 95 purity, right now it's now giving 93% purity and it has an extra 2% of inert material. So how would you model this? This will be definitely feed number two and one. So you will have to change and model again all these right here and the distillation column will be a pain in the ass to change because you will have to model once again the reactor, how the decanter, everything changes, so this will change as well. Now let's say our process manager states that we gotta decrease the number of plates because we are, I don't know, maybe uh, there's a healthy or safety issue and we gotta decrease the size of the column from maybe, I don't know, 12 meters to a new standard which is maybe 10 meters. So how can you do it? How will it change the distillation column and so on? So you can get the idea. It will be really, really, really complex to be modeling every single change. And that's why we gotta get another way to solve this. You cannot be solving this by hand. And much less you will not be able to solve all these, let's say all these plants, it has multiple plants by itself, they connect between each other, others are independent, independent from each other, let's say this is one plant, this is another plant, isobutane plant, this is the natural gas plant, etc. So you will need to learn how to model processes. This is the best way to get new scenarios. And why modeling? I really like this course because it will show you the importance of modeling. Even though you don't like or you wouldn't thought about modeling, there's plenty of work on this area. And the more you learn about this, the more interesting it becomes. And it's a very useful tool, especially for you as an engineer to provide to other, especially let's say for your company or you're in consulting, etc. Now, first things first, it not only makes us easier the work, that is, we don't need to make the calculations, but it's also faster. So even though maybe you are very good in modeling, sorry, in actually calculating all the previous data, let's say you are very good and you trust in yourself that this is okay and this is okay. But let's say you took three hours to model this. Well, using a software, you will take much less, let's say 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and so on. So this is the first reason I would recommend you. It's easier and it's faster to work with. Now you can check out multiple uh, simultaneous simulations. That is, you can get, for instance, the simulation of plant one and simulate plant two at the same time without actually connecting them. So you can work simultaneous processes at the time. Now you can also, as stated before, you can be actually modeling real life scenarios. So the example in which you needed to change the temperature of the reactor or the feed of the provider or our seller is not good enough. You can change the raw materials and so on. Also, it helps us a lot to make some uh, forecast on pricing and cost. Let's see how much cost for the materials. Like if we change from a 95 pure material feed, let's say we change to 90%. Of course, it's going to be cheaper, but we gotta get a process which models that and see if we can achieve our purity and how much will it cost. And of course, once we model the process, we can have a forecast or a, let's say, an idea on how much will our plant will cost. Also important, utilities. How much gas are you going to burn? How much energy are you going to need? You can get this, how much cooling water you will be spending. 
etc. And how it will behave under different conditions. This is pretty similar to this one, to real life scenarios. But also not real life scenarios. You, maybe you are wondering, you're a process engineer, you're new, and you want to know, uh, uh, you know that the next year is going to increase in humidity. So you want to model before it actually occurs so you can, let's say, prepare before it actually happens. Or let's say what will happen if we exploded via pressure uh, a tank. So you want to model it, what will happen? You can model this and you will be prepared in the case it happens. So that's a very good reason, I think, to learn how to model. Now, if this is not enough reason, let me show you which companies model in HISIS. So mainly, I will say petrochemical and oil and gas companies are here because HISIS is much more focused into petrochemicals, upstream, downstream, gas, oil industry. But still, you can model some commodities, especially as some acids, maybe the chloroalkaline industry, some coatings, ammonia gas production, syn gas or hydrogen gas, etc. So still, you have plenty of uh, let's say industries in which you could work and they will respect that you know how to model a little bit more benefits on simulations we can get to know stream and flow rates compositions of the streams physical properties such as pressure temperatures volumes specific volumes uh, paper quality and so on now for the unit operations we can calculate the total heat duty get prepared for that heat duty understand the temperature and pressure processes and well much more power efficiency etc one interesting part is that we can also keep a sizing idea of design not only theoretical concepts such as how much duty but what will be the size of the equipment how can we design the nozzle sizes the, the size of the tubes of the tube exchanger the shell size etc and you can also as an engineer we can get to know some data for instance we will need to know some mass or energy balances we could get some on transport phenomena especially let's say mass separation you understand how the feed on the column is distributed let's say the temperature profile let's say this is the distillation column right here you have the temperature profile which goes like this you you maybe want to know the pressure drop because you will need to buy a pump in order to increase decrease the flow rates etc so this is awesome because you will know plenty of physical properties also uh, this is a little bit much more technical but you can get to know some thermodynamical properties uh, let's say entropy gibbs free energy and well thermos law are not actually going to be modeled they are lost by definition so you set up the law in the simulation itself also, if you're working already in design, well, it will decrease the time of design. It will also decrease, decrease the experimental requirements. So instead of you going to 10 experiments to know if your little pilot plant will work, well, if you already model it, you can decrease it by maybe I just need two experiments. And well, also equipment design, instead of you buying, I don't know, maybe let's buy three heat exchangers with three different sizes. Well. What if you model them before and understand which one is the better one and then you buy it and then you model it and maybe you just save on two heat exchangers. And if you're already in the operation, which is very common, you are, let's say, process engineer, chemical engineer, petrochemical engineer, and you are at a raffinery, well, you will be able to model that existing process, also set a variation of process, uh, possible processes. Let's say what will happen if we get this feed from, I don't know, you're buying from Turkey, or you are buying from, let's say, the Eurozone, or what will happen if you get a Texas petroleum, etc. You can get that scenario without actually waiting for your results. And well, this one right here, you can also get safety analysis if you were to model those and get some environmental reports okay and well this will be the last of the advantage i will say it will definitely get a good impression on someone which is 
uh, hiring you maybe they see that you have some basics or not only basic imagine if you have a very solid uh, background on simulation well that's a definitely very good for your curriculum I also like to call this that well as an engineering it you already have the analytical minds you already understand the numbers you already understand the thermodynamics the all the chemical processes the balances so this will be definitely a complement to your let's say analytical engineering mind so that's awesome as well also it's awesome for you knowing which i don't know maybe you have two degrees of freedom understand why i suddenly model some process and then understand wow that's why i needed to know the reflux back in school because without the reflux you cannot relate to blah 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 or oh, wow that's why we need the inlet temperature and if we gave a heat duty that's why we can define the final temperature so you start relating the simulation to your actual studies so that's awesome and well i would say those are some advantages of course you got some disadvantages you can get frustrated trying to simulate processes it's also hard it's not easy to simulate processes some complex processes are easy to model and backwards you get so very simple processes in real life which are very difficult to model so i can show you a certain way but definitely there are plenty of advantages and this is the main reason in which i think you should understand and get into so, uh, software modeling especially chemical processes which i think is a very trending area especially in the petrochemical or oil and gas industry 